McFarland Toys had its New York Comic Con reveals today their big panel, and it was big, literally, with some of these reveals. So many figures I'm going to be getting, and this line continues to impress me because it went from I'll just get a few. I'm still dedicated to my DC classics. That's going to be my ongoing, never to be touched in terms of its depth, its scale of characters. But now McFarlane Toys starting to knock on that, getting some figures we never saw from Mattel, not seeing them from Mafex, or even DC Direct in some cases. I'm ecstatic about where we're getting, and let's break them all down right now. What's up, everybody? It's Jeffrey Lyles, welcoming you to another edition of Lyles Figure Files. And I know I, I started off talking about all the DC multiverse, but let's give it up for McFarland Toys doing a partnership with Marvel where they're reenacting classic comic book covers. We got some more additions to that, including one that I'm probably going to have to add to my collection because it features one of my favorite characters ever. Let's take a look at these Marvel statue reveals first up. And these pictures, as with yesterday, come courtesy of my pal and yours, Preternia. Make sure to go follow him. He's doing the good work out there in New York for all of us weren't able to attend we're getting thor from mighty thor number 177 classic pose that should look really cool on your shelf and then the iconic literally an actual use of the word iconic cover to secret wars number eight with spider-man turning with that new suit of his the black and they've even got the spider sense going very cool. That is really exciting to see that. And then we got some more additions to this. We've got these guys. Spider-Man, red and blue again, this time from 302. I'm still remembering that to be a McFarland drawn issue. So really nice job. You can see the web patterns. Very cool there. It's a chance in the background he's fighting. And then Captain America, all new Captain America, number one, Sam Wilson, a.k.a. Falcon cap. Then we got my boy Cyclops from the cover of X Men number one. So if you've been keeping track at home, we've got Wolverine, we've got Magneto, we've got Cyclops. Are we going to get Iceman? They have just done him in the distance because it's going to be kind of hard to make him his full figure since he was so far in the background on that cover. Next up is Daredevil from issue 500. And notice all that great cell shading on the on the on the outfit there. This is probably not called cell shading in comic book land, but the heavy ink job. Love that. Then we got Storm from Marvel Tales, number 236. Classic Storm costume. That's the way to go for me with Storm. Then we move right along to the DC reveals. Now I'm going to go with the biggest one right away. This is from my favorite just random mini series that I was not expecting anything from Justice League versus Godzilla versus Kong. So much fun. Highly recommended if you haven't checked it out. And I was like, how are they going to do a Batman versus Kong set? But they did it. And here it is. So here's Batman. And the really fun thing with this is there's two Batman figures in the set one's a three inch scale and the other is seven inches so that way you've got your regular standard size and then you got one that's more compatible with god godzilla with king kong and then check him out that's really cool i am assuming this is the three inch batman here so you can do that shot with no problem but that is really fun it doesn't look like he's got a ton of articulation. So you can see he's got some waist articulation. Not sure about the arms, and shoulders, but I mean, this King Kong, does he need a whole lot of articulation? Maybe, but this figure didn't have it. Love that snarling head sculpt or that very angry head sculpt, the Wolverine. That gif is driving me crazy. I'm going to go on to another screen back to me so we can move on to some other stuff. But I hope we get to see a Godzilla out of this line, too. Maybe we'll pair him with Superman. That kind of makes sense if you read the comic. Moving on, there's another movie-related character we got coming onto the line. And this one is for everybody who's excited to see him at the end of this movie on Flash. It's the Batman and Robin, a.k.a. George Clooney, Batmobile. 
And I read in the comments, somebody was like, oh gosh, how many Batmobiles is Todd going to make? But I thought that was the whole point. People want a Batmobile for their respective Batman films. And this is a pretty cool looking Batmobile. And I'm just kind of curious. We only got this one shot. Is it going to be able to fit both Batman and Robin in there? But it's a pretty cool looking Batmobile, regardless of my feelings on the movie. So there is another edition. We got the Batman for everyone. We got the Flash version of the Batmobile. Got a ton of Batmobiles to your shelf. So glad to see he does not care about, eh, I've already done Batmobile 1, 2, and 3. I'm going to keep them rolling as long as people are buying them. So that's really fun and nice to see at it. So at New York Comic Con, they're doing a fan vote with Green Lantern Jade, Bizarro, Classic Form, The Guardian, and Eradicator. Annoyingly, Eradicator is nowhere near the lead. Right now, it's Green Lantern Jade, which I think is funny, you know, because Todd famously was like, female figures, who's buying them? But she's she's far out distancing Bizarro, Guardian, and Eradicator. I do wish we'd gotten her in her Infinity Inc. attire as opposed to the Green Lantern look because I'd rather have Arissa Katma 2 in there as opposed to Jade. I mean, I guess we do have a Kyle Rayner, so it works, but I would rather see some other Green Lantern females before we get to Jade. But we do have Alan Scott, so there you go. Then we get some more additions, and we've seen all but one of these. We've seen Mr. Terrific, Grid, Lightning Lad in both versions, Green Lantern, Simon Bass. But today we got the reveal, and I think in one of the chats, somebody was like, I think we're going to see Geo Force, and it seemed like a really random character to pull from. But here he is. He looks solid, and excuse me, he's going to have that wild hair sculpt going. And three face plates. I love the fact that they're throwing these into the characters now with these collector editions. We've got a really nice smiling portrait. We've got a neutral serious face, and then we've got an intense, extreme expression. I think this outfit is the one he was wearing when he was part of the Justice League squad back when uh geez, for a very brief period of time, and then we ended so fast because they were doing all the crossovers. But I'm really happy to see Jail Force pair him up with Black Lightning, get a little Outsiders action in there, which would be sweet. So we got him Target exclusive. Target is no problem with finding their exclusives. So that won't be an issue. And they'll probably have a sale when it comes time for his release. Then we got the news rumored leak list that there was going to be a Justice League task force wave. And silly me, I thought it was going to be based off the comic book. And I was like, how are they going to do this? Because Justice League Task Force was pushing it. But it's from the Sunsoft Super Nintendo game. So you see we got Mullet Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, of course. And we got Flash, Wally West. We got Oliver Queen, Green Arrow. And we got Aquaman. And just like we've seen with some other companies like NECA, when they do video game versions, McFarlane, decided to do a little color shading with the looks so you can see we've got aquaman and he's got the little black funky patterns going there superman rocking the mullet we got wally west and i think this is our first time getting a classic wally west so maybe depending on how extreme that shading is i might get this just to get a wally and in flash attire without one of those goofy modern costumes got batman both batman and superman are rocking their cloth capes and Dark side. You know, this is interesting, of course, because this is the first time we've seen a more classic version of Dark Side without the cape, without the big um hmm, button that has D on it. Because that was gonna that was gonna sound weird if I said the big D on it. So that dark side looks pretty cool. I'm wondering how fast we're gonna see some repaints in classic straight up regular colors, or if we're gonna see platinum editions where they're just regular default comic colors without all this shading effect but dark side looks cool and he's going to be a really fun build a figure to collect to build next up we've got another mega fig of swamp thing this is interesting i do not remember when he turned red and i've been reading pretty closely to most of the dc books since the new 52 
I don't remember this, but it looks different enough for Swamp Thing fans. I think this is going to be a really cool addition to their collection. And if you don't care anything about Swamp Thing, I think he'd make for a great villain to fight Hulk and some of your other Marvel Legend characters. Maybe the Fantastic Four ventures onto a flower planet and finds this is a big monster to fight. So he's something I'll be keeping an eye on when he hits clearance later on. Then we got some more additions to the superpowers wave. And when we saw the Green Lantern, Alan Scott, Starman, and Wildcat, I was like, these guys are rolling. Now we got some even better figure reveals. We got Lobo. He looks a little bit more cartoon Superman, the animated series design. We got Robin, and that looks like a more of a Jason Todd design. We got the Adam, who's actually taller than someone. We got the Flash, Jay Garrick. So another member to add to your JSA batman with the cowl removed and we got superman in his regeneration suit i really need to start keeping track of who all we've gotten from the superpowers line because it is ridiculous now so many really cool figures come into this lineup and then we got another multi-pack if you notice he's bringing guns back yeah so thomas wayne the flashpoint batman one of the better figures we got from him early on is coming back in two-pack with Professor Zoom, a.k.a. the Reverse Flash. I'm not going to say that this is not tempting because we did not get a Professor Zoom in these colors. It was based off a really janky, J-I-N-K-E-Y, version of Reverse Flash. And now we get more of a the counterpart to that great Flashpoint Flash figure. So here you go. He looks good. He's got a separate head sculpt as well so, so you can see the craziness and then same with thomas wayne and we've got that 17 plus that's that's all todd needs to throw in to say it's not a toy it's not a tumor and we got the two guns that's great that's all we needed so i love this little disclaimer that's a nice work around and here we go probably gonna get these two because you know i like the thomas wayne that i have originally but i really like this unmasked portrait and I, Professor Zoom is one of the better Flash villains, and we really needed him, but he's not the only one we're going to get from these reveals today. Then we got some new God action coming, and I, I'm so upset that I don't remember who in the chat was clamoring for new gods. Now we got Orion, and he's the first one. He's got his Astro Harness rocking, too. I love the helmet. It's all big with the ear flaps. Really cool job on that harness there. Kind of makes the DC Classics one look a little bit small. Wildcat is joining the JSA party. So we've got Alan Scott. We've got Mr. Terrific. Now we've got Wildcat. Maybe another member. So stay tuned. Very excited. We're getting the JSA actually getting some real representation. We're also getting Titan's version of Aqualad. I'm not really loving this head sculpt just based on the render, but hopefully it'll be improved. It's really great to see Gar, Gar, Garth, Gar added in Garth. Yes, because Gar is, is the changeling beast boy. That's really cool. We get him and really fleshing out that Titans team. Then we get Superman and his cartoon way back in the day colors. So that's very fun. I can't zoom in enough to see if they're still using the Action Comics 1000 body, but the cape is similar. So that means we're probably going to see those annoying wrist cuffs all over again. I just wish he would just make a new Superman body that didn't use them ever again. And then finally, the, the reveals that had me most excited. These three. Captain Cold, my one of my favorite DC villains. Thanks to Jeff John's stellar writing of the character. The leader of the rogues. He looks amazing. He's not going to be too short, too small like the DC Classics version. I'm wondering... With will he include his flash or flash his cold gun because it's a gun but it's definitely painted yellow and will that count because Captain Cold would absolutely need his gun so I'm not sure there's no plus 17 not a toy so I don't know I'm really curious about that but then we're getting Power Girl and it looks like she's coming with Streaky as opposed to her cat and all the fans from JLE will remember her cat but I am so excited about this. She's going to join any version of the JSA you want to throw her onto. So that's really fun. I think they did a great job. You know, she's not a, uh, you know, they actually did 
power girl in a costume that makes sense for her and the cape is flaring can't quite tell if this is plastic though or if they went with soft goods and they just did this for the render but my favorite addition is my guy Green Lantern Guy Gardner, he looks so awesome, so cool. I wish he had a separate head sculpt with a bit of a sneer and more of that Mo haircut, but he is there. He's going to be joining my Blue Beetle and Booster Gold in my collection. So exciting to get these guys. So there you go. That is the McFarlane Toys reveals from New York Comic Con day two, or at least Saturday. Lots of cool stuff. I know some of y'all are not going to be feeling it, but let me know what you thought in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching. This episode of Loud's Figure Files has been filed.